This is the 700th episode of the Resistance Broadcast. I joined this podcast on episode 66. James, I think you joined like 63 or something like that. I don't know if you know the number. 64. 64. So we joined around the same time and then rebooted this thing into what everyone knows it to be now, in a sense, around like episode 70 something. And then Lacey joined us uh, that following spring and we've been together since and now we're at 700. And so first of all, welcome everybody to the Resistance Broadcast uh, 700th episode. It is just crazy that we're at that number and it's not even just that because we don't count that number for Mando Fan Show or the other things that weren't part of the normal show. Mm -hmm. So it's just been an insane amount uh, and when you do the math, you know, seven years or whatever, we really didn't take much week to many weeks off and we all have kids and it's just like, we'll get into it later on the show. Cause we are going to have our main discussion being sort of like a look back on where we've come to the, to this point. Um, but I'm really proud of what we've been able to do. And I just wanted to start that off at the top and thank both of you for, uh, making this fun for this long. It's been awesome. Um, but with that said, do you guys, th- well, we'll get to it in Will of the Force, but do you guys like Hu Yang? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I went to a, I don't know if I told you guys this or not. Um, I went to a, like a science exhibit recently with Bennett. Um, and they had some cosplay stuff there. There were a couple people like 501st and all that stuff, Rebel Legion and all that. But they had um, one representative of the Star Wars robotics. And there was mm. a life-size Hu Yang there that like moved around and could look at you and say things. And I, you know, I turned around and I saw that the operator was kind of like, you know, watching people and and mm-hmm. saying quotes and stuff based on this and i was like oh man this is so cool i've never seen a huyang before and he goes oh there's a reason for that this is the only commissioned huyang outside of lucasfilm this is the first one you'll start seeing them now but this is the only one that exists and really I like, whoa i was like that's kind of cool man Mm-hmm. Were you allowed Is to take so, videos of it? And, and I, yeah, I took a, yeah, I think I took a short video and I think I took a picture with it. Um, but what was, like I said, what was interesting is it, I, I knew immediately I caught my eye. I was like, I've never seen this before. And he said, yeah, there's a, there's like a, I, I don't know the details of this. So, so I'm correct. Don't correct me if I'm wrong, you know, but something along the lines of like, there is a process where they like eventually sort of let people know how it's done and once that is out there then it's free reign for people to to do recreations and things so he says that that just happened and we we rushed and we got this one made and Uh as of currently it's the only like licensed official version of uh this character and i was like and here it is that's awesome i'm i'm seeing it in person in a real life character and it's screen ready you know very cool Mm -hmm. Uh, wow it's wild Good for you. You got to see that. That's cool. I'm a little jealous. Um, all right. That's cool. Um, <laughs> so, <was> like, way <laughs> yeah. to ruin my intro. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, no, well, well, I realized thinking back now, like it was a very like subdued, like classic podcast NPR intro. And <laughs> it's supposed to be like the celebratory thing. It's our seventh hundred episode. So we are going to get it going here. But James, it is your final show. And I know sometimes people don't always listen to the end and I don't want people to miss anything you may have to say at the top. We're going to get into stuff later, I'm sure. But do you have anything you want to say to kick off your final episode of TRB? I mean, look, like, you know, I I talked about uh, that I was leaving and the reasons I was leaving on a previous episode. We just did uh, our live episode on Thursday, which was incredible with people sending, um, you know, comments and stuff my way, not to mention like, uh, you know, everything that I've seen on Twitter every, uh, from, uh, you know, peers, from uh, fans, everything. It has been quite incredible. Um, and uh, even in our Patreon, like, you know, the, the news went out and I just got floods and floods of people in our main chat just consistently being like, the show's never going to be the same. Glad John and Lacey are, are keeping it going. But man, you you know, you, you added so much to the show. It's, it's like losing a friend, all this stuff. And it's incredible. And, you know, even even now, like, you know, 
a while after we've made this announcement, I still can't fully bring myself to come back and like respond to some of that stuff because I just feel like, I don't know. It's just, it, it means so much, um, from everybody that I don't know how to like tackle it necessarily. Um, mm -hmm. but it's, it's one of these things where, you know, you see it and, uh, it really means a lot. And, and as we continue on, um, with the episode, we're going to talk a little bit more about like how we got here and, you know, um, all the, the great adventures that we've been on to get to this point. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's, uh, it's incredible. And, uh, as I said on the live show, like, yeah, I just, I really just want to focus on my family and my life and, you know, um, and my job and just things like that, just really bring it back to core and, and not have, um, not that it's a bad thing, but just the extra, um, things to, and, and focus on, you know, projects and, and other little passions that I have or whatever, you know, and mostly just the family aspect of it. I, w I want to be able to really give my everything to that. Yeah. Right on, man. I mean, again, most podcasts, I, I bet the average podcast fizzles out at 25 episodes. So you know, we have this, it's here forever. Uh, I mean, download some episodes just in case, you know, <laughs> but don't been, say it, that. I did um, an I did I'm another kidding. podcast when and then the people who had the rights to it deleted it afterwards. So I did like a hundred episodes of that show and it's just gone. And I was like, dang it. <laughs> like that yeah. sucks. I just meant if you know the the AI AI overlords take over and and, and take us all that down. Too. But yeah. Uh but yeah, <laughs> you know, family Ray. Yeah. <laughs> family friendly like it can be listened to by anyone forever and uh i'm, I'm glad that we're going to celebrate that today but we do have some normalcy um which by the way i thought it would have been funny if lacy showed up on this episode with like a steak because i think one of her first episodes she like ordered a delivered steak to a I hotel did. room yeah i did um but it was the first episode the very no the second episode i was ever yeah I, I, I don't think it was the first yeah it was second right. yeah yeah um, but we are going to get into some normalcy here with uh, Will the Force. So, James, for the last time, take it away, buddy. I fear nothing for all this as the Force wills it. Will of the Force. You know, it's kind of sad. I did my uh, last um, one with the Force without even realizing it. <laughs> oh, yes, right. <laughs> But we do Will of the Force. It's a staple. Got to do it for the last one. Um, as you guys all know, we'll probably talk about it later, but these questions, uh, the majority of them are sent in through patrons who are, you know, our uh, $5 tier, our major level, um, able to submit questions to Will of the Force. And uh, we just like to be able to include them into the show. And uh, that's how we're going to kick off Will the Force uh, this time with one of our Patreon submitted questions. This one coming from one of our generals, um, someone who doesn't, as far as I know, doesn't send in too many things. But I'm glad to hear from Jolton Jedi DiMaggio yeah. uh, onto the show. Will the Force this week asking the question: Will we see any of the staple Mandalorian directors, which are Rick Famuyiwa, Peyton Reed, Bryce Dallas Howard? Um, you know, for example, direct a future Star Wars movie? Uh, and if so, is there a specific era or character you'd like to see them, uh, one of them, attempt? Uh, Lacey, I'm going to start with you on this one. Any chance we're going to see uh, any of the Mandalorian directors handling a full franchise Star Wars theatrical release? And if so, what is it going to be about? I think that they're going to make another mando movie after this i don't think they're going back to tv ever i think they're going to stick with movies and if it does really well they're going to make another one and if they make another one it's going to be directed by rick because i think rick has been the person that not only has experience doing movies but has been right there with dave filoni and john favreau the whole time so if john favreau was like yeah i'll do the first one and then wanted to bow out there's no one better that he'd hand it off to than rick Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That does make sense. John, do you agree? Do you think it's a different director? I don't agree. Uh, I think it's a great answer and it may very well happen. 
Thank you so much, John, for not agreeing with me. (laughs) Don gives the death stare. (laughs) Yeah. Um, (laughs) That was my best Samuel L. Jackson Black Snake moan impression. But what my favorite gif. Anytime I'm annoyed at somebody, you send the Samuel L. Jackson from Black Snake Moan staring with the death that eyes. That's so the best. bad. Um, I was I was gonna say Bryce Dallas Howard will direct a Star Wars movie. Um, I was leaning towards, you know, if and when they pick up with new series and stuff, that Rick Famuyiwa sort of becomes the Dave Filoni of live action Star Wars television in terms of being executive producer, maybe showrunner, because they really made him third in line. At Celebration, it was Favreau on stage, then then Filoni, then Famuyiwa. And they made him executive producer, I believe, for season three of Mandalorian. Seems that promotion type of things in the cards for him. Everyone seems to love him. He's very good at what he does. So uh, that's where I had him. And then I was thinking Bryce Dallas Howard. It'd be interesting if whatever happens with these movies that are being announced, it won't be anytime soon. So she, I think she'll go off and do other stuff. She'll direct other movies first, maybe even under her father's company. Um, but I could see her doing a star Wars movie one day um, because she hasn't, as far as I can remember, even the episodes that maybe people, they weren't their favorite. They said that she did a great job directing them. Like mm-hmm. what was the, not the village was the village. The one she did first for, season episode four yeah 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 Mm -hmm. like that type of stuff it wasn't people's favorite episode but they're like wow she did a really good job though and then that a mandalorian episode of boba fett book of boba fett i thought people like were really like wow she really like crushed this one so i think she just only raised her stock and i don't know that she'll make her film directing debut in star wars but i could see it happen one day because right now the immediate future is pretty clogged with all these other directors making movies but and she's still, you know, she's still young. I, I could see her coming back one day. Just it might not be soon. Hmm. Um. I, I'll actually say something different. I I don't think any you know are gonna do this. Um. I think John, that's a great point about. I mean, I think if there was one person, Lacey, you're right. It's probably Rick. Um. But I think John's point might be more on you know correct about that as far as like setting him up to be that. Um, but I think all of these other directors, um, they, even the Bryce Dallas Howard and, and even Peyton Reed, it just feels like they're not quite ready to be hand handed that next thing. Now, Peyton Reed is interesting too, cause he's done the, he's done a trilogy for Marvel, um, which is impressive, but I, I just don't see him being like on that short list of people where they're like, we're going to do a star Wars movie. Who do we need? Well, we already have Peyton Reed. Who's great. Like, it seems like their choices right now are either really far to the, um, extreme of like, this person does a lot of really heavy work in, in movies like the Taika Waititi's and the James Mangold's, or it's completely to the other side where it's like, um, you know, your, uh, Charmaine and your Dave Filoni, you know, and stuff um, where it's sort of on the opposite of that. So these people feel like they're right in that middle path. And um, I, I don't know. I, I kind of just don't see it. And I think that their roadmap for Star Wars is not, they're not looking for the Mandalorian to upgrade the, into more Star Wars stuff. If they're going to do a Star Wars movie, I think Lucasfilm is going to look for a very specific director and the whole world is their, um, their, their, dartboard you know of who who they can pick i don't think any of these people are uh moving up the ranks to get to a star wars movie someday um the interesting thing is is also too when you talk about the mandalorian you already have john and you already have dave so like we're we're talking about the third mandalorian movie you know Mm -hmm. um and and i know dave isn't necessarily mandalorian it's kind of uh it's shifted quite a man man soka fett sort of thing but yeah um but yeah, I, I say I say no current Mandalorian directors are going to direct a Star Wars film anytime soon. So three very distinct different answers. And yeah. I, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. As we move on to the next one, uh, let's talk about how 
or ask the question, will Force Ghost Obi-Wan appear in any future Star Wars movies or series using a digitally created Alec Guinness? Now, John, you're kind of on mm-hmm. the record for saying that the Obi-Wan show was going to end with a mix between Ewan and Alec Guinness. But what what do we think about him being like a, a full on likeness? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't happen. False. Did not happen. That you were so happen. positive. You brought that out like, I don't know, like 28 uh, times. Would that not have been incredible? <laughs> <laughs> so this, do you guys know what this is? For for audio yeah. listeners, I'm holding Horse up a figure. Ghost Hasbro figure. You would think it's a Hasbro figure. Or oh, no, you spirit. said this. It was, no, it's Frito-Lay. It is. Yes. So when the special edition came out, they had a deal with Pepsi. They had a deal with uh, Taco Bell, and they had a deal with Frito Lay. Where if you submitted something from the bag, they mailed you the Spirit of Obi Wan doll. And I was like, I have to have it because I didn't think they made one of Spirit of Obi Wan at the time. And you could like light your flashlight under it, and it like really beams. Let's see if I can do that here. Oh yeah, he looks more like green. Though. Oh. Oh gosh! Yeah, <laughs> it just looks in the camera. It just looks like he's got a white dress on. <laughs> yeah, like all of his his arms and his head are still green. Oh, well, now like, that you're closer, it's all green. James but- Benny, yeah. I'm glad it's your last episode. <laughs> yeah, to Dagobah you, you will go. <laughs> You've been talking so much about why me. do you hate Obi Wan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's step outside. Say that to my non-existent <laughs> face. <laughs> Come at me. Um, so I don't know where I was going with that, but um, do, do will Force Ghost Obi Wan appear in any future Star Wars movies or series? Uh I'm gonna say no, only because I think they would have done it by Episode Nine if they were gonna do it, especially with you know Ray. These are your first steps. Ray, these are your last steps. Maybe during the last steps comment, it would have been cool if it was Alec Guinness because they did the first steps with you in, uh, but they didn't. So I don't. I hope they don't make an Obi Wan season two um, because I think it's it, it. It would just feel like doing it just to make you happy, and that's not enough for me. I don't think it's necessary. Um, and and the first one had to be great. I did say that too. Yeah. <laughs> so Star Wars that, is done. This see, this is what happens. We get to these milestone episodes, and they turn into the roast of me. <laughs> but I don't There's think we're going to see roast me on. Don't worry about I it. I don't think I am not making that mistake. So, <laughs> will Force Ghost Obi Wan appear in any future Star Wars movies or series? James, I am saying no. John says no. Lacey, do you agree? I agree. Uh... <laughs> He's actually right about this. Uh, I I think they would have done it already. Yeah, because they've already done Luke. So w- why wouldn't they do this person that they've had several opportunities? Whereas Luke, they kind of went out of their op their out of their way to make it happen. Um, it would make more sense in the story that's been told that he would show up digitally mm-hmm. created. So I'm gonna mm-hmm. say I don't mean to jump on. To John's answer, but I'm going to say I agree. I think that they will not. Yeah. And I know um, what James is going to say. <laughs> you do? Yes. Ah, you do. Say? You are going to say, I hate this character more than I hate anything that I hate. So they better not. I think that's what your answer is. Not. Um, no, I am going to say no. But it is tempting because you are getting ready to get into this world of, uh, you know, Luke Skywalker is a more regular character in that period after Return of the Jedi. We've already gotten him in The Mandalorian. We got him again in the Book of Boba Fett, and they doubled down or probably tripled down on the amount of footage that he's in just in that segment of that show that he shows up in. And uh, I don't think that's the last of Luke. I think there's... Uh, the Mandalorian and Grogu movie, which is coming to theaters. There's the Dave Filoni thing that's happening. We, we were just talking about those. I think Luke Skywalker might show up again. And if you're bringing him to the screen, the fact that he may or may not connect with his master, which he has done numerous times, would make sense. And that could be another really cool thing that they could add. However, 
Correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think that um, Sir Alec Guinness had a slight problem with the idea of his character coming back as a ghost. Does that sound yes, familiar? Because he was super yeah. religious. Yes. And so with that being said, yes, he did go through with it. Yes, he did. But I would imagine that if Lucasfilm ever pitched this idea to his estate, his estate would say, I don't think Alec would ever want to be brought back to life in any way, shape or form on screen to that degree. Mm -hmm. um, until, using his likeness. Uh, until Disney's I, I just, like, but we'll pay you $3 million. And they're like, you know, I think he I had think, a feeling that he would be for it. You know, he yeah, really, they, they, call that, <laughs> they call that John Edwards guy. And he comes over to their house and he's like, I'm, I'm sensing, sensing, I'm sensing a, a white a, beard. A. Alec, Alec, right. is it an Alec? Yeah. He had a white beard, white beard, white beard. That's him. Last That's name him. is a type of beer, a beer, a dark beer, like a stout, stout, <laughs> right. foamy, foamy. Anybody yeah. foamy? Right. And um, then they Guinness. That show was so big back in the day. <laughs> yeah, it was big. It was my my mom wanted to go on that show. So did my mom. Oh God. My one of my favorite SNL skits is the Will Ferrell. <laughs> is it Will Ferrell that does it? Where he's like, and a B, a B, a B, and B. no one says. Oh, I don't know. SNL did it. I know South Park did it. I think SNL did it too. Hmm. Or maybe I'm thinking of South Park. Maybe I'm thinking of South Park. Oh, South Park, they made fun of him like big time. The whole episode was dedicated to it. <laughs> but anyway. <So> stupid. <laughs> if I'm being entirely honest, I have no clue what you guys are talking about. The psychic. John Edward the psychic. The psychic. The what? psychic crossing over with John Edward. Crossing over. It was on Sci Fi Network. It was this oh. big show where you had everybody and it was like an yeah, I remember that. around him. And he'd come over and he'd be like, I'm sensing an A name, an A name. Anybody with an A name? And then they'd be like, oh, me. And they'd be like, yeah. Alex, yeah. Alex, and they'd be like, no, and they're like, out, out, and they're like, I have a sister named Alice, Alice. That's what it was. It was Alice. Yeah. Uh, right. she like dogs? No, she hated dogs. That's what it is. She hated dogs. She totally hated <laughs> yeah, dogs. Night, yeah. <laughs> like, because so she was dumb. bit by one, and they're like, no, she was never bit. And he's like, oh, so, someone was someone else here bit? And they're like, I was. <laughs> and then they're like, yeah. oh, Janet says hi. They're like. Ah. <laughs> I'm sensing a birthday. Is there anybody with a birthday? It's like, that's just a mathematical fact that 12 people in a room, one of them, share, or two of them share a birthday or whatever. Yeah. You see the videos oh. where they're like, now think of a number and now think of a color and now think okay. of a thing. And then they're like, an orange draft from Denmark. And everyone's like, whoa. Yeah. And they're and like, statistically, you're going to go with these. That's how yeah. Bob Iger is going to convince the Guinness estate to allow <laughs> a beer. All a beer that to be said. Yeah. I disagree. <laughs> I don't think they're going to be convinced. Yeah, money always, you know, speaks, but, uh, or money talks, I guess. But like, here's the thing is, I just, I, going back to my original point, I just do kind of feel like if Lucasfilm approached, like, well, what we want to do is we want to, you know, digitally recreate and bring him back to life. And I feel like there's already like a bunch of pushback against this, just even in public in general, when you're talking about like your Tupacs and other people who are still like, um, they're, they're putting faces on people to keep them, uh, young and all sorts of stuff. I, I think we're just sort of like pushing away from that a little bit. Um, and I would imagine that his state would definitely have a problem with it already because he, like I said in the past, he had a problem with the, 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 force ghost aspect of it so now you're doing it and he's not even able to participate just feels weird i think so i'm gonna go with no um on that one man that was a long-winded way to get to that <laughs> i'm sensing a yes a no a no you know yes no. yes so we were all three no's though in the end we were all three no's on that yeah. one yeah absolutely all right ding ding um except for my reasoning john you were <laughs> oh hey <laughs> look all right x uh our commander, Ryan Wara, sent us in the question, uh, after Bad Batch, and presumably the Mandalorian and Grogu movie is complete, will Disney finally move away from the clone content? Uh, cloned out, a term we often use on the show. Uh, Lacey, do you think that uh, they might close the door on clones? I hope so. If there's anything I hate more than Palpatine <laughs> or second to Palpatine, would be clones. We get so much clone content. 
it's crazy. I don't know. I don't have a pun. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so it's twice as crazy. That. Three times as crazy. <laughs> I don't have a pun <laughs> to give an answer there. <laughs> 700 episodes you guys have been hanging out here with me um anyway like i said i i i am totally cloned out i have had enough of these stories i want something new and fresh and original which is kind of one of the reasons i'm super hyped about the acolyte which watch to my surprise is gonna be like then there were clones and i'm gonna be like no Mm -hmm. like (laughs) because it's coming um i i Ryan, great question. I think that they are going to move away from clone content because the clone stuff is leading up to Palpatine. Palpatine has ended uh, with, like, all the clone stuff ends with him, basically. Like, once he's dead, I think that's, we're done. Um, And I think with the new Ray movie and stuff that's coming after that, because isn't Rogue Squadron supposed to be after, too? Yeah. I think those things are going to be completely away from the clone stuff, and I cannot wait. So mm. I'm going to say, yes, Disney will move away from that. Lucasfilm mm. and Disney, yeah. John, what are your thoughts on the clones possibly going away after we wrap up some of these uh, particular shows that obviously have connections to these storylines in them? Yeah, I I w- have never been a big fan of the clone thing. I mean, I get it for the <clears throat> the purpose of Palpatine taking over the galaxy and having needing a reason to create this army and then ending up using it to destroy the uh, government that created the clones but i think like even george lucas like he had these ideas written down and he had prequel names that he wound up bringing back around like mace windy was in the first draft of star wars and he does mention the clone wars but man did they it's it's like the the anchor man boy that escalated quickly you know suddenly looks back and it's like we have seven seasons of the clone wars a clone wars movie a fake clone wars tv show uh i don't even mean fake but dave filoni killed a guy (laughs) yeah yeah and then three seasons of bad batch and then all of a sudden palpatine's back from cloning and grogu's going to be used for experiments and then there's the eu bigger luke stuff and it's just like it's gotten kind of crazy and it's a lot. And I know there's people who that's the star Wars stuff that they like. And beyond that, they don't like much. Um, and that's cool for me. I I'll just say this, Ryan. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, it, it's tough, but I do think I, I mean, clones Cloning and the clones and the clone wars, it'll never go away because it's a part of star Wars. And you're always going to come back to that and be able to, uh, reference a specific era. But there, there is going to be a point when Disney wants to move forward with their properties right now. We're still in that area where we're, we're kind of clinging to the stuff that George did. It's connected here or there, but yeah. right. As we move into the Mandalorian, we, we sort of, uh, open a door for a new, um, era of star Wars and a world to, to play in. And, uh, you know, they're, they're doing more of, um, Ahsoka stuff, which was connected to other star Wars, Disney stuff, rebels. And, uh, and then we're moving forward with the Ray movie as well. And it just, uh, as you, as you branch out and, and build on star Wars, the new stuff will, will want to see spinoffs of that stuff. Uh, we'll want to see characters from Ray's new movie um, or the Lando show or something. Oh, like yeah. We want to see spinoffs of, of those other things. Even um, what, what's kind of good to see is, you know, we're used to um, say something like Battlefront or something. You're seeing a bunch of like stormtroopers and stuff run around. And that's kind of like the 50% of the game because the Empire you're always going to play is those types of characters. And there's clone troopers and stuff in that. But You know, you look at Jedi Fallen Order and you look at uh, Star Wars Outlaws and both of those games are exploring new things that actually don't really have much to do at all with with cloning or, you know, that aspect of what the Empire was building up to. Um, So I think the the further we um, go, the more likely we get away from very specific storylines like what happened in the Galactic Civil War and everything leading up to it and how, you know, how we got there. So 
That is a, a great question. Although, it, you know, I was thinking while you were talking, John, how much you hate AI. I was like, there's probably enough footage of me that if anybody, if you guys ever wanted to clone me and put me back on the show, AI could probably be like, oh, well, I don't like Obi-Wan. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I'll just reprogram it to love Obi-Wan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everything, everything the same except for these minor tweaks. Here you go. Yeah. We'll, we'll make him better <laughs> or whatever. Um, all right. A last uh, question for Will the Force is uh, the title of this episode. Uh, the title of the episode is Will uh, He Yang Build the First Lightsaber? And that is the question. As for a bonus, if we want to keep talking about it, uh, will that take place on screen in the mangled Dawn of the Jedi, whatever it's called, era movie that's coming? Uh, John, you get first stab at this one. Um, do you like the character? Do you think... Hu Yang will build the first lightsaber. Do you think it happens in this movie? What's going on? Did you write this question? Did you write this question? Was it submitted by a patron? Eh, no. No. I wrote Yikes. this question. Uh, I am a patron of ours. I go by the pseudonym David Ford, though. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, I, see, I'm torn on this because... I think this will happen. I do think Hu Yang will be not only in that movie, um, I think he will build the first lightsaber because I don't think anyone's going to have any idea how to do that. Um, but at the same time, it bothers me that a droid would be the one to build the first lightsaber. So it makes me want to think, ultimately, Star Wars is a human story. I think Mangold is going to be dialed into that and he's going to see the importance of a human building the first lightsaber. So now I'm changing my answer mid answer and I'm saying <laughs> Hu Yang will not build the first lightsaber and he will not do that on the screen in the Mangold movie because he will not build the first lightsaber, but I think he'll be in the movie. So what a yeah. weird answer. Yeah. Well, John, you, you sort of, you got to where, I was already going to say, I don't think he will, but I think there's a very specific wording around how they've described Hu Yang in the Ahsoka series as he's been doing this for this many years, you know, and they, they, it almost seemed like that conversation has already happened about how old is this droid? How old is he? How long has he been doing this? How long has he been involved? And let's, you know, what would be cool? Let's just go all the way. Like, and, and James Mangold saying like, yeah, or do we have a droid that, you know, would work who's been around forever? And they're like, yeah, we do have that droid. We've never said he was 10,000 years old, but we can now if you, if you, if, you know, that's the story you think we want to go with. And he's like, yeah, sure. So I think that conversation has happened, but you are right. I think it's more likely that a character, a human character, or or you know whatever the main character of this the show is, it they are going to create the lightsaber, and then the little nod is going to be um, Hu Yang being like, "I think I could improve upon this," you know, and it's like, <laughs> oh, like we know where this is going because for the next ten thousand years, he's going to be like the expert in building and customizing and and relating it to everybody individually. But he has to first learn how to do that. He he doesn't create. He's he's a droid, so he learns how to create from the original master, and that person teaches a lesson that uh, uh, that stands the test of time and is, is there forever, ten thousand years. Lacey, what do you think? Any chance uh, we actually get to see him build it on screen, or are you with us? I don't know. What's your thoughts? Uh, my answer was actually your answer, James. So I don't really have much to. <laughs> going full circle here from an Ooh. early episode of TRB where this would happen a lot to me. Uh, I think that, you know, there's a reason they have Hu Yang walk through the great tales of the Jedi with Ahsoka. There's a reason he has moments in that show where he talks about how long he's been building them mm -hmm. and how he knows everybody's lightsaber and he knows every single one. And it's because <clears throat> he was there when the first one was built. Um, I agree with John that there has to be a human aspect to it, but I agree with you, James, that it's definitely something that he's like, oh, if you just did this, it would be better. And then he knows that moving forward, 
how to make everyone's lightsaber work, but also how everyone builds them because he's the person that's constantly looking at them and looking at the details and who used what hilt and who used this piece and that piece and how they've improved over the years and how you wouldn't believe how terrible they were in the beginning and how great they are now. Um, That is a very deliberate story choice. So I think he's going to be in this movie, but I do not think he will build the first lightsaber. Mm -hmm. You know, say, you know, as we're having the discussion and everybody's bringing up their points, you know, there is also some truth to maybe it is a little bit of a a blend of the two. Um, There is always the possibility that you get sort of like an Iron Man Jarvis thing going on where like the first guy builds it and he's the genius and he's obviously come up with the idea, but then like, you know, it's like crazy or out of control or something. And it's like, you get that levity, that humor of like him taking it and giving it to the droid and he goes, fix that, <laughs> you know? And Hu Yang's like, whoa, what do I do? You know? And so- Or he tosses next it away time, and then Hu Yang picks it up and fixes it. Yeah, yeah, or something, yeah. And you <laughs> you have a, maybe a situation where like Hu Yang, you know, does this thing, but then uh, a dangerous enemy shows up and then Hu Yang goes, master, you know, or whatever. And he throws him this thing and then like he turns it on and it actually like works, you know? <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. I, you know, there could be some some cool stuff they do with this. And he's like, whoa, you, you, you did a good job, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like the idea maybe comes from there and Hu Yang tweaks it. I, you know, there's a lot they could do. And again, this is all speculation. We don't even know that he's in the movie, but it it feels right to us as Star Wars fans that maybe that's a good way to tie everything. It feels so it deliberate like could that be they easy. brought those right. moments up in Ahsoka. Whoever this 100%. force user is, this human force user, like just uses the force to like, build a metal pipe and he's like now i'm just gonna throw this with the force at people and that'll be my weapon and Hu yang's like give me that (laughs) yeah he's like oh yeah and it's important to remember that you know dave filoni was the writer and director and and just like overseeing person of ahsoka and he's also the head creative guy over at lucasfilm now of that team that's connecting all these stories together so if he's working with james mangold I would not be surprised. We've seen it before. A prime example would probably be uh, BB-8 and R2-D2 between The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, where Ryan Johnson was like, can you send Rey with R2-D2 and not BB-8 to Octo? Because mm-hmm. I need this in my story. Like, I can totally see Dave Filoni being like, okay, what's your story to James Mangold? And he's like, oh, you know, this happens. And then maybe there's a droid. And he's like, I have the droid for you. This right. is what I'm going to do. And then he works yeah. it into his show so that it's not so jarring when the and, character and, shows up. And I don't know this for sure, but like presumably this is a George Lucas character too. This character was created for the Clone Wars sure. TV show, which was show run by George Lucas. Like it's his thing, yeah. uh, writing, producing, you know, making that show uh, and coming up with it, more details into his Star Wars. That show is just as much Star Wars as the original trilogy or the prequels or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so to, to sort of have this remnant of, um, uh, what George has given the franchise, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be, um, a completely original idea by James Mangold. He can say, what is, what is George, you know, what would George say if I had this idea of a droid, um, and how long they've been around and everybody oh. at Lucasfilm is like, we have that, or we have like something that we, that could totally work from it. And it came from George. It was his creation. And he said some of this stuff privately that never actually made it into a show, but Didn't this was his George? concept. James uh, Mangold did James talk Mangold. to George. So I, I think all those conversations happened when they were making Indiana Jones five. Yeah. I think, I think, you know, they were making the film, they were liking how it was going and, they were like, yeah, we've had these ideas tossed around. The Game of Thrones guys had this idea of this Dawn of the Jedi thing. And Mangold's like, I would love to tackle that. Look how we did the Archimedes thing in this movie, you know? And But I remember at, there, so. yeah, but at Celebration, he had said, I think he sat down with George and pitched his I think, story yeah, I think he did. Yeah. But, uh, Very cool. yeah. Good question. Yeah. They're always going to be careful with that stuff. But, yeah. Um, that's that. Yeah. Well, sorry, I just kept it going. I never, didn't want Will the Force to end, but... <laughs> <laughs> so our uh, fifth question on Will the Force... <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is going to be it, though, for Will the Force, and we are going to head into our next session, which is a discussion, uh, a very reflective one. <laughs> 
Obi-Wan once thought as you do. All right, as we reach 700 episodes, and with one era ending and another beginning, let's look back on our favorite moments, uh, standout memories, especially in the last year with uh, since our 600th episode, but really just overall, um, seven years doing this show together, uh, how far the show has come, and uh, you know things we have achieved to this point that maybe we're going to look back on and be like, wow, that happened. All that sorts of stuff. Um, because, again, at the top, I, I alluded to it, and I was thinking about it because I have seen a bunch of podcasts you know, celebrating milestones of 400 episodes, 300 episodes, that sort of thing. And it's just like, I think we just because we're just always adding two each week, it you don't realize the number. And then all of a sudden, it's like 700 episodes of this podcast. And the fact that the three of us have been doing it for over six years together now mm -hmm. is just in, incredible. Mm -hmm. And I think incredible. we... Maybe, <laughs> incredible. And I think we may have taken that for granted just because it kept just being on to the next one and on to the next one and on to the next yeah. one. And I don't think I ever really like reflected on what we've done or thought about like if I was leaving the podcast, like what would my look, like, what would I look back on and that sort of thing. But we're in this weird spot where, James, you are leaving the show. This is your last episode. But there's all this to look back on. And at the same time, Lacey and I have to figure out what we're going uh, to do to move forward for, you know, whatever the next number is. Um, so we're in that interesting spot. And so let's take the time to look back now at, you know, 700 episodes of this show, plus Mando Fan Show, plus all that stuff. So you guys... So yeah, go ahead, James. What? Well, I just had a quick one because I thought right at the beginning as we were talking about the number 700 and how did we get there, a little anecdote that maybe a lot of people don't know is when we first started the show, it was exactly like any other podcast. It was a one episode we, a week thing. We would get together and uh, we would, uh, you know, I wasn't, John wasn't writing the show notes. So there was just this collection of ideas. And as we started to kind of sculpt that a little bit, it turned into like, well, maybe we should do a, a thing where we're taking fan questions. Maybe we have a, have a specific discussion section. Maybe we do this other thing where we, this or that. And those shows ended up being somewhere in the range of about an hour and a half every episode. And I was like, yeah. man, these are long podcasts. And at some point I kind of came to the group and I was like, Hey, what, what do we think about this concept of doing the same show every night, except somewhere in the middle, breaking it off and saying, that's our show. See you next episode. And then again, being like, hi, welcome to another episode. And just actually taking the same amount of content that we're recording every night and splitting it into two. And then we can release two episodes a week. Um, but it's the same amount of work and it very, I don't want to say very quickly, but it didn't take long for us to be doing two hour and a half episodes every week. Yeah. Uh, it definitely turned into like putting the full effort forth on both episodes every week. But that idea of being a uh, bi-weekly podcast has always stuck through. And for the longest time, we even labeled those episodes, mm. you know, 250A and 250B. And then we realized that's stupid. Why isn't it just 500 I, and 501, you know? Yeah, I think we started that with episode 100. I think it was like 100 um, A and 100 B. Yes, yeah, and then yeah. I think it was the 500 episode episode where we actually switched it from 250 A and 250 B to just 500. I think goes, why are we yeah. doing this? Let's just number the episodes. So we're like, yes, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a but, lot of a lot of my contr contributions is always, why are we doing this? <laughs> yeah. You look back on. Um, the years with the podcast. I think when I joined, uh, we were still strictly audio. We did video, but it was video with like visuals, like slides, not actual yep. video of us. Yeah. And then I was in a closet, like literally a physical closet uh, in the dark recording because that was the way that I got the best sound because uh, mm -hmm. that was my best mic and everything. And then eventually about a couple months later, I was like, can we do video? <laughs> because I saw that's where podcasts were progressing just in the industry in general. And 
um, it was something that I thought was important for our listeners and viewers to connect with us. Because even if you don't watch every single episode on video, you might catch one or two and then you know who you're listening to. You see our mannerisms, you see our joking around, you see um, just who we are and how our personalities translate. And I remember one of the funniest things for me with the video transition was in the first year that we were doing it, there were so many people that would check out one or two video episodes or come in later and say, that is not what I expected when I was listening to you for so long. And then I come in and I watch a video. Oh, yeah. episode. We had so many people being like, I did not know you looked like that. I did not know that is the voice I'm hearing to the physical right. that I'm looking at. And I thought that there was just such a fun kind of moment for us because if there's one thing that we've done over the past seven years is constantly evolve and our evolution is from a um i would say a need to make our show the best it can be and I, and I think that oftentimes any choices that we make, which we've either, either changed or made better or gone back to an original idea was because we were like, what would be best for our listeners? What would be best for our patrons? What would be best for people that are in our community, the resistance members, um, when they're experiencing our show? What is that experience like? Um, which we early on were one of the first podcasts, which very specifically asked for fan questions, asked to engage fans, asked to engage listeners. Uh, we take pride in that. We've always taken pride in that. And I love that because over the past seven years, I've gotten to know so many of you that listen to us um, and become friends with many of you because you're taking part in something that I care about, that I'm passionate about, that is like you know, a dream project for me. When I was initially asked to be part of this podcast by John, I I'm not even joking. I said to Matt, I was like, why would anybody want to listen to me talk about Star Wars? And my husband jokingly said, well, I don't want to listen to you anymore. So someone has to listen to you. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, That's kind of what happened. But I was just so nervous. And I think if you go back and listen to the first year, probably year and a half of episodes, there are moments that I'm genuinely nervous about giving my opinion on things because I don't know how people are going to react and or uh, how the fandom in general is going to react. And I think that's something that I've grown into and navigated better over the years is just being like, you know what? This is what I think. If you don't like it, that's okay. That's all right. Uh, but early on, I was very, very nervous. Like I would cry <laughs> if I thought that like someone was going to think badly of me or, uh, you know, as things grow, you get mean comments and, and people kind of bully you online. And that's something that you got to grow thick skin over time. And that's been a little, yeah. that's been an interesting growth for me personally over the years. You know, it's weird. We, in, in a, in a strange way, it feels like almost we've done the opposite of what a normal person would do in the sense of like, when you start a, when, when it just, you're nobody, you start a podcast, you're like, obviously no one listens to us. And it's more and more get you know, you get more listeners and you get bigger and bigger and bigger. You start to think like, wow, I have a real voice in the community. <laughs> but what's funny for us, specifically me and Lacey, I don't know, John, how you felt about this. But like when I joined, I was joining Star Wars news nets. Like it was a big deal for me, you know, mm -hmm. and I, oh, I think Lacey yeah, was kind of similar too. I didn't think that. I just thought, oh, oh this is a podcast. This just this is a podcast in yeah, general. I, yeah. So I my my coming into it is I was like, oh, this is like crazy. I need to watch everything I'm saying. Make sure like do people really want to hear this because it's going to go out to a lot of people. And what's funny is like as we've grown, I've gotten less into that. And I, I know that we have a following. But at the same time, I just feel like I'm sort of talking to you guys. I'm not really mm -hmm. thinking about the bigger picture of like how people are going to take. uh this take, you know, that I have, um, too often. And it feels a little bit more, uh, like where we've 700 episodes later, it feels like we're actually just sort of doing the podcast for ourselves. Like mm -hmm. the three of us are just talking about star Wars between the three of us. And then we post it, you know, whereas mm -hmm. like, again, when I started, it was like, 
it was like being invited on to Howard Stern's show. And I'm like, hi, I'm James Bainey. <laughs> you know, I'm like you're very nervous because well, you, you know thought, that a lot yeah, of people are thought, listening. You thought Grant like ran the site or something and he was oh, on I the did. show. Absolutely. So you were trying to yeah. impress him and all that stuff. But yeah. And yeah, Pat, I, I started writing for Star Wars News Net. And then shortly after that, about a month later, um, I had saw that they had a podcast and they asked me to go on and I went on and then I really enjoyed it. And I sat upstairs at my dining room table with my iPad and I don't even think I had a microphone or anything. So I was using headphones. Oh my gosh. And that was, <laughs> so if you, if you go back and listen to episode 66, which you could probably only get on SoundCloud because I think Apple I think only so. keeps 500 episodes in, you'll hear me for the first you time understand? on the Resistance Broadcast. We have so many episodes that Apple doesn't have them all because we have too yeah. many. Apple's right. Because like, it also doesn't You don't have the count. money to cover all this but, story right, for you we, guys. People need to know, though, that the, while this is our 700th episode, that doesn't count, John said it before, our Mando fan shows and all these other extra things we've done. Yeah. So Apple's literally like, you're doing too much. Yeah. <laughs> We're not yeah. keeping everybody your and, stuff. <laughs> and one thing I'll say about our show, like one thing it is like a, a massive achievement that the three of us who all have kids, we have day jobs, we have families. I had two children little, in the course that I've been on this podcast. And we, none of all us. All three of us. Had, yeah, none of us yeah, had kids when no we joined. No kids. Yeah. yeah. So Rachel was pregnant when James joined the pod. I got married that year. Not, I... I did tell you guys that she was pregnant. So there was, bef yeah. it was, bef I joined yeah. when I did not know I was having a kid. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Oh, right, right, right. And then I got married that year. So yeah. So now we all have kids. We have, we have day jobs and we're still able to have been as consistent as we have been with two episodes a week, almost every week. Like we really didn't start taking time off until this past year or so. Uh, and there were very brief breaks when we did take time off. It was like, Eight days without TRB. What are you going to do? You'll be fine. Um, <laughs> so, but the fact that the three of us also didn't always agree on everything. Like, I think there's, I, I'm not even talking about Star Wars podcasts. I don't really listen to, I don't listen to other Star Wars podcasts, not because I don't support people. It's because I, by the time we're done podcasting, I need to think about other things. And like, I can't just be, that's just how I am. And I also don't want to have someone else's way of talking shape how I talk. And that's all the only reason. I, I go listen to all the awesome people who do podcasts. But I guess my point is we disagreed on a bunch of things. And some people would hit us at the wrong episode for their first episode, whether it's a Star Wars war or something. And they'd be like, you guys disagreed way too much. I couldn't handle the bickering. And I'm like, but that's what it's like. If you go to a bar with your friends and you're talking about sports, you're talking about movies and stuff, you get into these arguments, but you love the people you're doing the arguments with. Like there, how many times I've told people or told friends, like if you have a girlfriend and we don't make fun of her or bust her chops, we don't like her. It's like you get the comfortable, <laughs> you get, you get to the comfortability with people where I could tell Lacey, like, that is so stupid. Or like she can tell me like <laughs> arr, arr, you're wrong. Or or James can be like, oh, here we go with this, you know? And it was real. And I think like why this podcast has worked uh to this point is because the three of us just had that chemistry. And we've had plenty of times where it was like rough and tough and we're like, oh, I don't feel like recording tonight. But then you hear from the people who listen to the show who have made all these friendships with each other and like what the show has gotten them through, whether it's serious illness treatments or it's dark times or I lost my job or I went through a divorce and like people reach out to us and tell us those things. And on the surface, like even my mom, she's like, how's your Star Wars podcast doing? And like, I don't think people take it that seriously. And then you you, they experienced certain things like I we went to London and we had a packed room in London doing a Star Wars podcast. We were at Abbey Road and somebody said, are you the resistance broadcast? Those things really happened. And when you tell people that or, you know, we've been ranked on Apple or something and we went to a premiere, then they're like, holy cow, like I maybe I should take you seriously right now. 
And it's mm-hmm. a moment that makes me feel good because we have been so genuine in how we've done this thing. Uh, my personality is my personality. I may put my foot on the gas a little in certain moments with the podcast, but I think when people meet me at celebration and stuff, I'm just me. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a regular dude, good dude, and I like talking about this stuff. And I am going to criticize it because I love it so much. And I think what I hold proud most about what our podcast has been is that thing that people always tell us if they when they love our podcast, they always say this, you guys are such a positive podcast and you criticize things all the time. But the way you guys do it is done in such a respectful way that you remain a positive podcast. And I, mm. I love that so much because like, I don't want to sit we're here. Pro, and- we're, we are pro Disney. We're not like yes, totally not like to show Disney. Thing. Yeah. yeah exactly. I'm not here to be like, be like, uh, go buy this, go see this. You have to, do this. and it's cool that if people genuinely feel that way about that stuff, but I like that. We're like, yeah, I can't believe they did that hotel and how they did that stuff. And it's like, I still love that Kendall Gellner nerded his life out, <laughs> dressed up, going he to that amazing. Thing. He looked yeah. amazing. Going but yeah. I liked it. Which by the way, I'm, I'm going to watch note? those ordinary adventure videos. Yeah. I want to know 100%. what's going on at the he hotel. And they are the best. Yeah. Literally yes. though, I still can't believe Disney doubled down, tripled down this week and was like, we did a great job on this. We're just getting started. And everyone's like, come on, it's a failure. Just admit it is a failure. Admit it didn't go away. You want it. he's like, We learned a lot of things. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, I broke up with this person, but I learned a lot. You'd be like, What? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And I it, mean, look, like we've had uh, to, the criticisms are 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 kind of big too. It's not just like I didn't like what they did in this episode of this show. Sometimes we we are just in, we're still in that group of people that are like there probably should have been a plan for the sequel trilogy. You yeah. know, we can yeah. we can love the movies and and have love a great them. time and talk about it and just go into depth for all these reasons and and you know, discuss those movies Ignatium, but at the same time, we can still be like, we see the shortcomings. We're not going to gloss over that. Um, and I, I, I think, uh, John, to add to your point of like why the show has gone on, uh, so well and why people have listened for so long, it's just that the fact that like our fandoms are a little bit different sometimes, you know, like I probably dig into the animation more than you guys. Lacey obviously collects more than, than any of us, you know, John, you have been, um, not that Lacey likes this too, but like John, I always think of you as like the production behind the scenes kind of person. Like you really know, you watch the, um, process of how it all comes together. And I always refer to you uh, when you're like, well, they filmed in May of 2020, you know, (laughs) I'm like, I do not follow that at all. But having, you know, all these different, the understandings of, of a lot of the different facets that make up what a Star Wars fan is. Um, you know, I've even had the discussion with a lot of people like, um, well, there's other things you can do. And I'm like, well, no, (laughs) you know, like, I, th- I I like talking about Star Wars in this in, in this manner. I don't like dressing up in Star Wars. You know, I I don't think I would necessarily get along the way I have with you guys with other you know aspects of of Star Wars. So no. does that make sense? Though, in fairness, looping back to when we started doing this as a as a video thing, and I James and I always like we're two ships passing the night where he was like, we got, I'm going to push the video and we're going to push the video. And I'm like, no, we're an audio podcast. And Lacey's like, I just want to grow the podcast. I don't care how we grow it. I'm going to, mm-hmm. I'm going to run through walls to grow this podcast. And James was more of the video. I like the audio, but when we started doing the video thing, like a part of the show, I think that audio listeners don't get are the facial expressions. When you hear something that you don't like, or like the, the, you know, the, the smirks and the, like the, the hidden laughters or the Taco Bell challenge, how just dramatic we were when we were trying to eat that stuff or our Patreon commentaries where, you know, we rolled up to, I don't know if it was the, a new hope one, but we each like Lacey dressed up as Leia. I dressed up as Han. And then James found like a blanket. Spoiler alert. I apologize to people. Uh, those are going to have to be redone. They were all deleted, <laughs> not because of us, right. because of other individuals that deleted them. So, yeah. yeah. But, but, but those are like, the challenges you face with a podcast is like you do all this work and then yeah. something happens and you're like, oh my God, I now have to 
do all right. this work again. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. And there's nothing I, you can do about it. And those are the challenges. I think a lot of people ask that all the, t- all the time. Like, uh, what are the challenges of a podcast? How hard is it? Because um, I take pride in that a lot of people tell us it looks easy. We make it look easy. We make it look fun. All these things. It's not. N- look, it is a great time. We have done a lot of wonderful things. I love talking about Star Wars. I'll talk about it forever. That's never going to stop. But there are a lot of challenges, just like with any type of creative process, that you are met with. You know what I mean? It's not like we record and it's done. There's marketing that goes into it. There's social media that goes into it. There's a customer service aspect where you have to reply to people and make sure people are Mm -hmm. feeling heard. And it's all the time. Uh, which James was touching on at the beginning of the episode. It's like, it's a nonstop thing. And to be yeah. successful, you have to be doing it nonstop. And that's not just for podcasting. That's for any type of content creation. And a lot of people ask us, mm-hmm. how do we get started? You just have to do it. And the problem yeah. is, is that you can't stop because consistency, and I'm speaking from my social media side now, which is my my real life job, uh, you can't stop doing these things. You have to be consistent. You have to be plugging along and you can't stop. It has to be all the time because the moment you take your foot off the gas, you'll see a difference. You'll see things either slow down or the algorithm won't work in your favor. And that's where people get burnt out. Like that's a normal thing to happen. Um, It's just how you recover when you come out of that. Yeah. Nobody, nobody ever says it's too much hard work seeing my best friend every Thursday, you know, or whatever, (laughs) but it does become too much work when you do get to a point, um, where like that meeting is now a show and and, like, it has to, you have to think about what you're doing before the show, how you're going to roll out everything afterwards, how you're going to stay relevant in the in-between and all this stuff. I mean, there is a reason I'm leaving and it's like, it, it was to a point where I thought, you know, 700 episodes, um, that's a lot to look back on. Um, so I think, you know, a a good time, it would be a good time to, to kind of let this chapter of my life end, um, and sort of gain back all that time that I do think about the show, like every single day, almost all day. You know, it, it's, it, it is very constant all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Even when you're not actively doing something, there is this aspect of like, um, you know, anything you see, any YouTube video you watch, like ever, you look at, like, you see something they do and you're like, oh, how should we be doing that? You know, you know, how could I do, how do I incorporate that into this other thing? You know, and, and so. And, and you start, I never, I never can't bought think about that. other things because you're thinking this thing, you know, only this I, thing. Yeah. And I never bought into that. So I like, I was always like, I grew up on radio and that sort of thing. And I like that we do the video and stuff. But I guess my point is like, we each were, have, have been quite impassioned about different ways to approach this thing. And we all, every time we found like this common mix that worked and uh, people are like, Oh, I loved your guys' chemistry and stuff like that. And it's like, yeah, but we, I mean, it's just a real, like we don't, you know, it's like live to tape, even our, this episode here, like this isn't being pieced together like a jigsaw puzzle. And it's not like, Oh, I didn't like my answer there. Let me try that again. It's like, no, whatever I just said is on the episode. And that's pretty much how we've always been. Um, and I, I don't know. I, I, I want to get into some some favorite moments in a minute, but um, I I am very proud of how far we've taken this to this point and <clears throat> how we've kept it family friendly and because a lot of people raunch up their Star Wars and I like the like that my son will be able to and my daughter will be able to watch the podcast if they want to you know if they start getting into the Mandalorian one day and they're like oh you did shows on on the Mandalorian I want to watch those now like that's that's mm-hmm. that's potentially there one day and that's just for me you know you know from my experience but other people get to 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 share it the same way that they tell us like when i listen to your show i feel like i'm in a room hanging out with my friends nix she always says she can't join us for trb live but she cozies up on friday and watches the episode with her with her friends us and i just i just love that um and my then, favorite I'll, thing is when people tell me that they're talking to the tv 
That's my favorite yeah, thing. Yeah, right. When people yeah. tell me, like, I had a conversation with you guys last night and I was so not agreeing with you. And I was like, how could you not bring this up? Or they were saying, I totally agreed with you. I get those messages all the time. Like, I was talking to my TV. I was talking in my car going, yeah, sure, of course. And, uh, and I've yeah. had the exact same experience when I'm not on the show and listening to the show that you guys and maybe <laughs> a guest had on. I've actively been in that thing where... I'm listening to the show with my headphones on and I hear somebody say something and then have an actual physical like, well, don't forget, oh, wait, I'm not on the show right now. You know, like an actual I say it out loud um, sort of thing. Um, that is totally random other thing too. It still happens to me this day. Occasionally when I listen to my band's old music, certain parts, if I'm into it enough, if I'm listening to it, I might, I will like have oh. this reaction to like want to headbang in a specific part because it was ingrained in me that, that when I hear these voices or when I hear this thing happen, I have a built-in thing that I've been doing for seven years Yeah, all the time. That's how my body reacts to it. And so there are, there, yeah, it's weird, I have, but it's I have true. no doubts that I can't pinpoint a specific time, but I have no doubts if there's been an episode where you weren't on, I made it a point to bring up how good physical media is, you know, <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> but, and, and you know, what's funny. I, I was thinking about this. The last episode of TRB I missed was like episode 85. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It was like two. I, and the reason why I missed it is because I went to New York Comic Con to cover it for the site. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't even like. <laughs> yeah, John, you've always been a very consistent aspect to the show. Like, uh, you know, as yeah, that yeah. general host, like me and Lacey have never really done a show where it's like, hi, welcome to the Resistance Broadcast, everybody. It's me, James. John's out. <laughs> I, you know, I was thinking about that today. I was like, you know, I'm not sure what we're going to do moving forward. Me and Lacey, we still have to like talk about that stuff. And um, I don't think we're not, we're not going to really take big breaks. We're going to, you know, go live Thursday. But I was like, I don't think like, because when I, you guys have done it where you guest on a different podcast. Right. And I go on a podcast and I'm like, here's the show notes this is what we're going to talk about. I'm like, this is fun. Like <laughs> you showing me the topics to talk about. And I'm like, I never had that. Like right. aside from like back in the way, way back in the okay, day, we're like, but you're ah. making, hold on. But that was your part of the responsibility though. Like each of us got our own thing. You're making yeah. it sound like I've never gotten a break. I've never, no, no, no. and I'm like, no, whoa, no, no. whoa, 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 whoa. Because no, on the I'm other side of that like, equation, James was always editing and doing all the production work. I was doing more of the saying. marketing and community work. So now like, I'm saying, I would love to roll into the episode and get surprised with like a, will the force question or, or, oh, you know, okay. something, something like that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so that, that's what I mean. Yeah. I mean, we all carried a lot of weight for a long time on the podcast and that's to, you know, like, like, and we're not sitting here trying to pat ourselves on the back, but you're right, Lacey, it does take a lot of work. And, uh, I think we all deserve to take pride in that, but do you guys have, um, a, like a, a, a standout number one favorite moment of the podcast in, the time we've been doing it together, uh, a recent one that's on the top of your list or, or a few maybe. That, I don't know uh, about out. favorite, but I do have one that sticks out to me. And it was before Celebration 2019. I was in my other space and we were having like a pre-show meeting, the three of us talking about like what we needed for the show and um, like what we wanted to bring. We were doing a panel and it was a big deal. Like I'd never done a panel at a convention before. Um, and I was like super nervous. Um, and I remember we were all discussing and John, you were like, do you think someone's gonna recognize my hat? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, absolutely not, John. No one cares about your hat. I like that's There's no exactly way I said that. Yeah, you did. I and thought I it said, started with no, you, you saying said, we no. won't get recognized. No, 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 no. It started with you bringing up your hat. And you said, do you think people will recognize my hat? And I said, no. I think she's right. I think it was something along these lines, John. Absolutely yeah. not. And you were like, are you sure? And you were mostly joking. I will give you I was tongue in cheek. I need to be clear because 
God help me. <laughs> People think. <laughs> oh. But even then, I was just like shutting that down quick. I was like, no, absolutely not. Oh, no way. And James was like, well, maybe. You never know. And I was like, there's no way anybody's knows who we are. Because I used to call it my brand to be a to to joke to be a joke. Okay, John, a jerk. No one. Okay. Everyone, <laughs> we're just talking through memories. I'm joking uh, with you. I'm right here. All right. So then I was saying how I was like, yeah, no way, absolutely not. Because I was I could feel the anxiety rising that I was like, oh my God, no, absolutely not. That's so embarrassing. Because I actually don't like being the center of attention. Um and so we go to the show it's the three of us and these guys go to pick up the tickets at the ticket booth counter for our press badges our media badges which was a big deal we got accepted as press and so i was starving (laughs) and i hadn't eaten all day and i just wanted a pretzel i just wanted a soft pretzel that's all i wanted and i was no surprises no surprises (laughs) i think this is where this originated uh, on the podcast, me loving soft pretzels. So I just really wanted one. They're one of my favorite things. And there was like a, a cart in the convention center. It was like the day before the show opened where a person was serving pretzels. So I was like, perfect, perfect for me. So I go and get a pretzel and I'm eating this thing, probably not attractively. I was starving. I just was eating. And so I'm eating it, whatever. I walk over to these guys. They're at the counter talking to the lady. I'm eating it. And I get a ping in my pocket from my Twitter account. And someone had taken a picture of me eating this pretzel and posted it on Twitter and said, Lacey, I found you. And I knew at that moment, I was like, oh no. (laughs) First of all, what have I done? Second of all, like this journey is going to be epic. Like this adventure is going to be something that I never ever imagined it would be (laughs) um and to that point john had person after person after person walk up to him with his hat on and it was and i'm not saying this to be like self-centered to be like oh look at me i'm saying Mm -hmm. it's one of those things that this episode more than anything is a celebration of what we've accomplished and it is to take time to say look at what we've done Look how high fives are all around. Look at what we've accomplished because we, at the time we were just thinking like, we really care about this. We hope other people care too. So anytime I am faced with something where someone comes up to me, sends me a message, anything, it's always such a wonderful moment because at the end of the day, we're human. And at the end of the day, this means so much to us. So when anybody takes the time to appreciate all the hard work that we've done, it means so much to us. Even if it's a picture of me eating a pretzel and looking like a goblin in public, (laughs) I appreciate it. Um, But that I think was a really eye-opening experience for me because I was definitely the one of the three of us that was like, no way, no one cares who I am. No one cares anything I have to say. Um, So to feel special at any time or or feel valued more than anything else this community has made me feel valued as a person um and made me feel like i belong and i've said that before like our found family is our community and if there's one thing that i take away from this whole experience is that this community of people is incredible these people from all walks of life all different parts of the country and the world um that engage with us that love star wars with us that care about us um i just want people to know that we care too we care right back like it's not one-sided um and you you have made this journey in this podcast the like the love of my life this project has been so amazing and and john and i hope to keep keep it going in that same light um, and mm-hmm. we do hope that you, you stick around to see what's next. But so far, I can't help but celebrate what we've accomplished, the three of us together. Um, and 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 thank James for everything he's done for the podcast and, and all the things that he's brought from his perspectives and his hard work. Um, and it, it's going to be missed, honestly. Yeah. So I see. James, do you have a, a favorite moment? Um, now this is this is now. Let's be clear for our audience. James has doesn't like being on record 
choosing things. <laughs> he does. And this is the definitive because this is well, your last episode. So now whatever you pick here, we are laminating and we're putting in the archives. <laughs> I, I, you know, when you, when you look at it that way, I, I don't know if it's considered a cheating thing, but like when I, when I think about going back on the podcast, I was like, what are the height of everything? Um, you know, we've interviewed a lot of people and done a lot of pretty crazy stuff with the podcast, but I think every single time that travel was involved in some way, shape or form, that's absolutely a, a top highlight for me. Um, you know, I went to California on my own and I was like, what am I doing? Like, this oh, yeah. is wild. That like, was how did first, I like, holy cow, we're actually doing something. Yeah. yeah. And like my family and my friends, like nobody ever believed, you know, and, and it doesn't matter how many times it happens. Every time I'm like, oh, I'm going to be out that week, you know, and they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm going to London for Star Wars. They're like, what? I thought you just liked it and talked about it in your basement. And I'm like, <laughs> that too, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but yeah, like I think the biggest highlights for me are anytime where travel was involved. So in some cases that was going and meeting um, like other peers, like other Star Wars creators and 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 um, media people, you know, um, and seeing the cast and crew and stuff like involved there. Uh, other times it was um, like celebration things, which obviously has, you know, big, big stars there too, but like, you know, listeners and, and other like real people. And just the, just that sheer sake that I'm like, I'm in Chicago right now for the, all these days yeah. just to be here to talk about star Wars. And uh, at the end of the day, like we just like, you know, star Wars celebration is expensive so to it, it there is something about being able to to go to them and say hey we'd like to do something at your show and they're like yes be a part of it you know you're on the you're in the book that's you know mm -hmm. forever going down is like when people get here and then we say these are all the things that you can participate in there's our name and uh, right. don't even worry about tickets you, we'll you guys have passes to get in and stuff you know come out and see our Indiana Jones movie that we've been working on. I mean, there have just been these things that are so unreal to me that involve traveling to that place. And for those short days that were there, it's, um, I don't know. It, it feels like the closest thing I can come up with probably for, for, you know, most listeners would be, how long you plan a trip, like a vacation. And every day you're thinking about what are we going to do? We got to pay off that. We got to do it. And then like, suddenly you're there, you're at mm -hmm. Disney world or whatever. And you're looking at the cast and you're like, all of that work has led to this. I'm actually here. It's actually happening. It, I think there is something very real about that. And, and being able to, um, meet, like I said, colleagues and peers and to meet like fans, listeners, everything like that. And, and not to, not to disinclude you two, I see you on a screen every week. When I go to the event, it usually means I get to see you in person and it's like, you've come to life or something. It's, it's wild to see you guys in person. And, uh, those are, those <laughs> moments are absolutely the highlights for me. John is gigantic. Yeah. If anybody wanted to know. Me? Yeah. It's like it's like meeting Chewbacca and you're like, he really is tall. <laughs> and, and then, then literally me, Princess Leia. I'm tiny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then there's people like Mark Newbold and that are like six four and I'm like mm -hmm. yeah. and Jonas. <laughs> or Clayton. Yeah. Jonas. Yeah. Standing, yeah. I have the picture right now. I'm I'm looking at the picture of us with Jonas and legitimately the top of my head is at his chin. Where am I? Yeah. His belly button? Oh yeah, you're down there somewhere. Nah. You're above my <laughs> shoulder. <don't> <laughs> yeah, um, it's uh it's we're, 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 basically Jonas is the same thing. I see him on screen, I see him in person. <laughs> my, it's just the same as you guys. <clears throat> my I don't know if this is my favorite moment or not, but like the the event we did in Anaheim in twenty twenty two at the brewery. Um mm -hmm. Just, I think that like, if like that old adage, like if you were to show somebody TRB, just firing on all cylinders and just killing it, that event, man, was 
because it was a way like people had to get on a highway or whatever to get to the brewery and it to get people to want to leave star wars celebration when there's a ton of stuff to do including go to disneyland and all this sort of stuff to come to a brewery that they've probably never been to to see us do a live podcast and we filled every damn chair uh we had standing room in the back it went off without a hitch uh the bits all nailed it like the the sound the drinks like everything yeah, that, that we did to prepare for that the the photo opportunity on the side with the cutouts just, and everything all the pre-show the post-show the the show itself like that was such <laughs> i like i am so proud of that like i know we did the panel at chicago and we did the london one and those were two awesome uh, events too especially you know we packed a room in london i think that's so cool but something about the very rebel alliance approach to how we did our own event because we didn't happen to get a panel that year on the podcast stage so we're like screw it let's just do our th- own thing and it was i'll never forget that moment like they'll maybe they'll there may be things that i do uh, for the rest of my life that will feel like a very recent thing to me always and those are the types of memories I know like really impacted me. And, and the way it no, ended too, getting, getting, getting our, that our, uh, and the friend stuff. of the uh, mm-hmm. Legion. Yeah. From huge. Andy, yeah. Unreal. Andy and Chris. How but about just Debbie like, giving me a baby blanket? Debbie gave me yes. A baby and you know, having that little girl, like we had, we had, I think we had a two year old there and we had like a 70 year old there. Four. Yeah, we. I mean, we had. In other words, the the range of people that can go to a TRB yeah. show. I am very proud of that too, and how hard we all worked to get that set up and done. It's just we were really in the pocket, and I'm very very proud of that. And no one could ever take that from us. And I know we were able to stream it, people were able to watch it, but just everything about that event and that day just made me so happy, and I was so proud of 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 what we've done, and I'll never forget that. And I don't know that we would have been able to do it without the three of us at that time because we all really carried a lot of weight in how that show came to be. And it just came and went. And then all of a sudden it's like, we got all these extra sunglasses and everyone goes on to the next thing. But we're like, man, we did like, we just did that. And it was just such a great feeling when we finished and like having that beer right after and just being like, I can't believe we pulled all those things we wanted to pull off and it all went well. And I'm just so proud of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not. N- I don't think any of us could have done this show on our own, and that's the thing. Is like I, I sort of sit back and I look at all the different ways we have all brought our own thing, and not just like what I was talking about earlier with like I like this part of Star Wars. Is like, you know, I so often look back at a catalog of the different eras of our show. And I'm like, I forgot we did that. Like starting the show with, ah, dun, 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 dun. And then eventually like, you know, getting my friend to write a song for us that is, you know, reminiscent of the resistance theme, but its own original piece. Uh, and you know, has continued to be the, the theme forever. Um, you know, we, uh, our, our show originally had a completely different like logo and I eventually came up with the like circle thing. And then, and then just like this version of the resistance broadcast that you're looking at on the screen here of the, the words logo. But even that has like, I don't even think people know like all these little iterations and changes where I look back and I'm like, Oh, that's when we were using the old logo and people are like, I don't see a difference. And I'm like, yeah, man, we did like a whole, you know, slew of episodes and, and production and everything. I'm looking at a giant poster. Uh, Cause at one point we had these two like giant scrims for one of our live shows, and it's yeah. hanging up here and it's the old resistance broadcast logo. And it has um, at RB at S W N N as <laughs> our social media. And it's like all these little things that I'm like, I, you know, it's not that I forgot that we did that, but it's like that was the absolute peak of the show at one point. There was one point where I was making these little shorts that didn't have us and it had a little sound clip and the, our logo would like float around and then it had like the text of what we're talking about. 
Like Mm -hmm. all these little weird things that um, have been the stepping stones along the way that I can look back at, um, you know, how, how we've, you know, I mean, technology and clips and yeah, Yeah. that, that's an, that, that is another, that's a really good point, Lacey. That's a big aspect to our show is that for the longest time, I had to figure out the best way that we can actually pull off this thing where it looks like we're in the same room, but we were in three different locations. How was that even possible? And then 2020 hit and everybody had that had ability, to do it. that capability. Yeah. I, like Skype was around, but it did not work the way we needed the show to work. Oh, horrible, horrible. And and so we had to do a lot of really interesting technical Zoom. things to yeah. make that happen. Number and then- 40. Yeah, as soon as as soon as the pandemic hit and everybody needed to be separated, all of a sudden these new technologies came out where they embraced more of the video chat and and more of this type of technology, which we've also adapted into and changed the show um, in, in a bunch of different ways. I mean, even this, even if you're watching on video, even the frame that we have has changed probably like seventeen times. Mm-hmm. Uh, the show, you just go back and look at the catalog of how we used to do it. It's like, oh, we used to have that background. We used to look like this. We used to do the layout like that. Um, it, it is quite crazy to <laughs> recognize over 700 episodes how many steps we've taken towards the next generation of our show. And personally for me, like, you know, like the, all, all, with the band too, like it, it's wild to have worked so long doing that and being in on it. And then it's also just as wild to take a step back and watch it progress from there without you. And I'm, I'm oh. so excited to see the way the show is going to go um, and how, what decisions you guys make on, on changing things or adapting to something different and being like, Oh, you know, Oh, that's cool. You know, I never really thought, or we never could do that with three people. Now they can do that with two. That's, you know, I'm, I'm really excited for you guys. And I do want to take the second also just like, Thank you. Cause like I started this little rant with, I don't think any of us individually could have done it. There's no way I would be sitting here talking about 17 iterations of <laughs> layouts. If it wasn't for you guys to helping to, to make all that happen. It's, it means a lot. Thanks Thank buddy. Um, we can't forget about this though. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I, I was waiting for it. Uh, when I started that, I was like, I want to talk a little bit about the iterations, but we definitely have this thing. And I was like, I got to wear the red make solo to happen. It was so big. Yeah, man. it it was. And the, the best part about it was it really just came from innocently loving that movie and feeling like it deserved better. And that's all it came from. I and also it think like, it's a prime example of a i'm going to use marketing speak i apologize it's more than that but it's basically a campaign that started with the three of us that then progressed because of the strengths of the three of us so john came up with the idea john's the idea man he's always been the idea man he's always the creative guy he throws everything and anything at the wall to see what will stick and he will you should see you should see the ideas we don't use too yeah he has all these ideas (laughs) all the time like he's the guy that has a notebook by his bed wakes up goes oh we should do this writes it down he's that guy he would give the ideas to james james would then make the design make it happen work with the visuals whatnot then they'd come to me and I go, okay, this is how we're going to market it. This We're going to do a day for it. We're going to make it about the community. We're going to do this whole thing. That movement makes so to happen the first day, the second day. We did a third day, right? Third day. That movement in itself is only possible because people often ask us how it happened because the three of us are that perfect storm of intuition, creativity, and passion that you don't find all the time. Um, and because of the three of us came together in such a great way, uh, that is what happened. And because we all have our separate strengths, that's what progressed and, makes all to happen to what it is now. It, and it was just, or it was very pure because I remember 
like drawing like do oh do the the solo logo but do replace star with make and replace wars with happen and then i was like wouldn't it be funny if we put that on a t-shirt because they'll never they're never going to do it that's where it started from wouldn't it be funny if we made a t-shirt that said makes a little too happen and mm-hmm. then i wore it to new york comic-con and all these people start high-fiving me and they're like yeah solo 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 and then the celebration thing happens with Kazdin and Howard whatever. Us and yeah. Rob and then Brito L- talking like, about we it. Should do it. Yeah. And then Lacey's like, we should do a day. And then we did the day. And the first, uh, wh- whoever had woken up first that day, like texted it the others James. of us. Yeah. And yeah, he's like, it's already, we're already, it's already trending. I'm like, trending. what's already trending? Why yeah, are you calling me? And you're like, make Solo 2 happen. I'm like, what? We didn't even put our thing I look yet. back on that episode from time to time when the three of us were talking before it. And we'd be like, yeah, use the hashtag. And John's like, maybe like 25 people will reply. I don't know. We're going to just have a fun day. <laughs> That's amazing. And then it turned it, into what it was. And I remember driving home yeah. from work that day because we all worked that day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Driving home from work on the highway. And I was stuck in traffic. So I was looking at my phone because I was stuck in traffic. Not while driving. Uh, and I saw a tweet from someone being like, oh my God. And Ron Howard had retweeted me and retweeted our photo. And I immediately called John and I was just screaming on the phone. I wasn't even talking. I was just yelling and he's yelling at me and I'm yelling at him. And I'm like, oh my God. And I swear a lot in real life. So I was swearing like crazy. And I was like, oh my God, (laughs) beep, beep, beep. Like, (laughs) I can't believe this happened. And it was just an unreal moment that, I look back on as like, I don't know. I feel like I'm looking back on like such a young, ver- young version of myself, even though it's like three years ago, but because yeah. 2020 happened, I feel like I'm such a different person from right. then yeah. to now. Like 2019 oh, sure. was such a like bright eyed, bushy tailed Lacey being like, hooray, the world is great. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> um, not that it isn't, but you know what no I mean. No way. Oh, there's like, going to come a time when they make us stay in our houses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's going to change ever. No. Yeah, that first makes a little too happen day. I think it had like thirty five thousand tweets. It was it like was 50, like thousand. It was like the number one trending topic in the world, For and it's just two like weeks. And we were that in, we were on ET live. We were like yeah on all the like Today Show, like all this stuff. We mentioned it. Yeah, it, it's and funny because that first year Lucasfilm it. didn't really have a precedent. We noticed years after that they were like, hey, if stuff like this happens, which by the way, the fact that we even had to like, they had to, they had to send a note to everybody <laughs> like, a, a, you know, hey, if this, something like this ever happens again, here's the new protocol for this. But like that first year really was like, you see all sorts of Lucasfilm people that are like, yes, we love this, right? We're going to support this, right? And like all of backing them. all that. And then after that point, getting a little bit more like, well, we're not really allowed to talk about it. So that made me know that the email went out, you know, and it's like the fact that like something we did like caught the attention to that degree of like when um, and I don't know this for fact, but they definitely told you to stop using it. Right. I've I've. I've emphasized this to people as like that first day very specifically was so big and so unprecedented. It it does not surprise me at all that like Kathleen Kennedy was aware of it. Maybe even Bob Iger was aware of it because when a property like that goes that viral out of nowhere, (laughs) people are notified that something's going on and they have to be aware (laughs) of what's going on. And to be, to be at the Indiana Jones premiere and to have that conversation with Kathleen Kennedy and say, we did the make solo two thing happen. Are you aware of that? And she gets like, absolutely. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh my gosh, I can't believe I like this moment is happening. It felt like, it felt like the total eclipse yesterday or the other day, you know, I'm like, <laughs> I'm in the moment right now. I'm having this conversation and she is telling me about how Luke, uh, how uh, solo was for them, you know, like, and how they appreciate what we've done and, and, and how all, it was just absolutely nuts. Like, how do you, how do you not just treasure that forever? And, uh, you know, another quick little antidote too, that I want to mention about the make solo to happen logos. I, I remember John pitching the idea and I remember taking my computer and sitting down in a Jimmy John's and ordering, you know, my, my sandwich and sitting in the booth, you know, taking a bite of sandwich and then working on two things, the thumbnail for that week's episode 
and then switching over and working on the make solo two happen and thinking in my head, is anybody behind me? Are they going to see this and, and comment? Like you, you like, Oh, what, what, what's this is like, I like star Wars, you know, <laughs> like, is someone going to see my screen and what I'm working on and maybe strike up a conversation because it's very clearly evidently star Wars Would the person behind me also like solo would just seeing this logo alone inspire somebody to strike up a conversation about their love of star Wars. And that moment, that thought in my head, I didn't know it at the time, but that is the driving thought of why make solo Two happen was so viral is because people saw it and immediately were like, other people like solo. I love solo. Exactly. I want to be vocal about this. And it inspired yeah. people to talk about that next big thing. And it's funny because like, I, it's so crazy to think that I, w I was having that moment in my head of like, would somebody seeing this strike up a conversation and not realizing that that little thing is actually the thing that's about to make this logo I'm working on or this concept blow up into what it did. We're on the Wikipedia page under like the movie solo. Yeah. Like and listed. yeah. And here's an, here's another thing too, is like we, we developed this phrase make solo to happen and the bigger it got it it almost got hard to protect that concept because make blank make happen. blank happen became a thing that was sort of like socially acceptable to say that that um make whatever, RB2 whatever you, happen make whatever you, happen yeah. exactly yeah whatever you like and you want to see more of it's the like it's the the meme sort of that you put around the your idea and just like re-spit it out as make blank happen whatever it is and it's and like the, i can't believe that we did that you know and the only reason why i picked those words were because i remember wanting to see solo 2 in the logo and i always loved star and wars being at the top and the bottom of that classic logo and i was like what words can we use and i was like if it's solo 2 i'm like let's just make it happen i'm like so I'm like, let's just throw that on a t-shirt and replace that with that and that with that. And then he sent the design. I was like, this is incredible. And then we put it on T public or whatever it was uh, at the time. And everybody Another said, like, along the people way. were, people were all into it. it was, and then we did the pins and it just like, I, I'll just say this, with this makes solo to happen thing. <clears throat> I love that. It just started with an innocent thing because we love the movie. And I think that's why it captured people's because there were other people that felt that way that maybe got tired of people telling them it wasn't good or that like, why'd you like that movie and this stuff? And they found their people, the, the solo fan people. And I, I'll happily, you know, accept that banner if that's what mm -hmm. we are referred to as, because I love that movie unabashedly. And I, right. I love also let it be known. Like, it, it was a lot easier for us to do this because the three of us happened to love that movie. If it was a situation where one of us like hated solo, it would be like, right. yeah, I'm part of that, but that movie <laughs> blows. Like, <laughs> you, know. you know, it, 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 on occasion, it has been something that I've even used to symbolize our success in the sense of like, Oh, I do a star Wars podcast. Oh yeah. What's the name of your podcast? Resistance broadcast. Like, Oh, you know, like, I, I don't know that or whatever. And I'm like, uh, we did this thing called make solo Two happen. And it's like, I know that, you know, like I've had people not cool. know like sort of where it came from, but they are aware of that moment and that whole thing. And you can almost sort of use that as like a, I'm the guy or we are the people who did this and people be like, Oh, I don't even, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm unaware of your show and the pantheon of how many other, you know, star Wars creative things there are out there. But that one was that one thing was very, very big that it's almost unavoidable to miss. Almost like a, a band that you maybe don't know the name of, but you've heard that one song, you know. Yeah. And when all the uh, YouTuber, angry YouTubers were making videos about us, I was like, well, we've made it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Bring it on. That's that's fun. I love that. Um, obviously, you know, our community knows how much they mean to us it's a very special place where all are welcome and the seeing the the friendships that have spouted from this podcast that no matter how many more years this podcast goes on i hope those friendships go on just as far if not even further 
Um, it's so awesome to see people like traveling together to celebrations because they met on TRB or rooming together in hotels or just bonding over the pod. Uh, that means a lot to me. But I guess the, in closing for me, because I know we're probably up against time, um, I just want to thank both of you. Lacey, I know we're moving forward and we're going to keep this thing rolling and we're going to evolve and do new things. But as we stand here today, 700th episode, uh, it, 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 we got here because of the three of us. Uh, so Lacey, obviously, I, I look forward so much to continuing to work with you on this. I'm excited about you know what we can maybe do in the future. Uh, and I'm glad that you did join us six years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and that Sometimes. we, <laughs> and that, and that, that we looked past your truck driver mouth, uh, on people our- don't know <laughs> that I swear really bad. Honestly, people yeah. tell me all the time. They have no idea, which yeah. honestly I've toned it down after having children because they hear everything you say. So I would honestly say that I really don't, unless you piss me off, <laughs> then I probably swear a little bit more than I should, but, um, I don't do it around my kids hey, or I, other I, children. I, I shouldn't just say my kids other children i also don't swear i swear on my other podcast all the time and i just try to keep it pg here Mm. but um and james it there's not much else to say that i won't be able to say later to you or off the show so i don't want to sit here and start crying or anything but dude anytime you're doing anything for a long period of time even if you don't like it you still feel sadness because it ended because you're like that was such a part of my identity and that is not the case here because I've really enjoyed doing this with you for a very long time. And if you, even if you're not best friends with somebody, um, you know, you're, you're, you, say you're friends with somebody, but they're not your best friend in the world. <clears throat> even if you didn't like somebody and you were able to do 700 episodes of a podcast with them, you're like, there's something special between them. But I do like you. And we are friends mm-hmm. and we were able to do this for so long. And it's, it's, it, the more I see the number and think about the number 700 is just crazy to me, but I'm definitely going to miss you, man. Um, it has been a hell of a run that it's going to be hard to top for a lot of people uh, to hit the, these numbers we're hitting and we're going to keep it going. And uh, I know I'll see you down the road, but uh, just because this is ending doesn't mean friendship ends. And uh I, I look forward to staying in touch with you and you busting my chops about things I like and me busting your chops about soccer and Apple and, and all that sorts of stuff. But it's, it's been so great, man. I'm, I'm going to miss you. And I know our audience is going to miss you a lot. So I'll give you the floor to, uh, to say anything you'd like to say, of course, but it's been awesome. man. and, and uh, I, I don't know what else to say. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you later. I'm sure. <laughs> That's that's sort of the the incredible thing about this week. Like, uh, you know, we we let people know a little bit in advance, and throughout this week has been full of people just consistently. I, I said this a little bit on the live show too, but like, just full of consistent messages of like, "Wow, you really did this!" You know, I like for me on the show, like I I really enjoyed it. It's like I'm losing a friend. You know, a, a bunch of people said those things along the lines of like when you've listened to somebody and had their opinions in your ears for so many years for them to just not be there all of a sudden, it's like a big change. And, you know, to me, like the podcast is, is similar in that way too. Like I, I don't want like in a, in a good way, like I don't want the podcast to be like my energy, you know, like your, your, your job is something that you do. It's not who you are kind of thing. Um, But it is, it is a little bit hard to separate from that idea of like seven years of your life, you've been doing the same thing and you've put everything into it. And then to sort of just kind of be like, I think it's time that I hang that up and move away from that just to see, you know, what else my life can move towards. Um, because it, this is more than a job to me. Um, you know, people spend years at their job and, and it's weird to, to move to a different one and, and not see those coworkers anymore. But this is still something different because even, even in the relationship between like a uh, job and sort of like a hobby, it's crazy because if I did, if I quit my job 
or, or, you know, that suddenly ended, I was fired or whatever, whatever, for whatever reason, I'm not going to be working at the same job I've worked at even longer than I've been on this podcast. I don't think as many friends and family people would have reached out to me like, Oh my God, I can't believe you're not going to be working there anymore. (laughs) But I, I mean, sure. Patrons, fans, everybody like that. that I've had those people reach out to me and, and that is just absolutely wonderful, but it is wild to think how many of my personal friends and family members have taken the time to reach out and be like, I just heard what, you know, like that is, it's wild because even they identify that as something really cool that someone they know just decided that they were going to meet up with some friends and start talking star Wars and turned it into something as big as, as the show has gotten. Like we have, you know, all these listeners, we've had all these opportunities, uh, we've gotten, you know, to to interview so many different people and and make friends with all these other people who are, in, in some ways, even better and and more successful creators than we are, and and we call them friends. You know, it's just the journey has been like absolutely incredible to look back at, you know, me asking my wife like, hey, is it okay if I go down and like I, I'm I'm gonna guest on a on this podcast? And I think it's kind right. of a big deal. I'm surprised they're gonna let me come on, and I kind of want to do it. <laughs> And then to think like seven years later, it just literally became like an aspect of our lives. I do the podcast on these days and, and sometimes more than those days, trailer reactions, um, commentaries, uh, all, all sorts of other aspects of discussions about ideas and everything. Yeah. Travel. I mean, like John, you talked about us taking breaks sometimes and like this London podcast coincided directly with a family vacation um, for like Easter. And like we do this annual thing where we go to Florida. And so to travel to London, spend four days doing everything that involved like recording our show and all this, and then flying from London to Florida to meet up with my family who's already on vacation. And I'm joining them later because of the podcast. And then at, at, uh, in Florida on vacation with COVID <laughs> editing the show and putting everything together and making sure that it rolls out for that Monday episode. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's quite incredible how like even my family as well. Like, I don't know how many people, friends and family members are listening an hour and a half into the, into the podcast, but how much they've supported uh, the journey that I've been on as well and just accepted that Star Wars and the podcast and all these listeners and all these opportunities and everything has just become part of my life and and <clears throat> not just supported it like good for you, but actually been like, that's nuts, dude. Like keep doing that. That's really cool. I'm really proud of you. And I'm mm-hmm. I'm um I'm proud to say like I, I've had a lot of friends like brag about that. Like, Oh, I've got this friend who has this really crazy uh, yeah. the number one star Wars podcast in the world. And I'm like, that's not true, <laughs> but I'm glad that you think it is, man. And that, you know, it's really cool to have uh, friends and family who are consistently bragging about the success that we've had and, and having mm-hmm. to ride the line between being humble and then also like sort of been like, wow, we really have done a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And that has to be said that none of us were friends with each other when we joined this podcast. You and I didn't know each other. Lacey and I didn't really know each other. You guys didn't know each other, but Mm -hmm. we became friends on the journey. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really cool too, because our listeners are always saying, oh, you guys are, you know, have such good chemistry and stuff like that. And I became friends with another listener because of you guys. And it's like, well, we became friends doing this podcast. So we are on the same exact ride with all of them. And then the community we've built and everything. And it, definitely yeah, not think. just us, like literally yeah. I can't like there, there are our listeners and, and other people that we've made friends with, with, with us. And then I think John, you say it pretty often, but like, like the, one of the most incredible things is to see, two random listeners become friends yeah, and have this lifelong connection that I am very certain so many of, of the people that we see who have met and made friends and made communities that were only, that only exist because we decided to talk about star Wars. 
Um, I mean, how can I not tell you guys to just keep banging on and just keep doing it? Because it just like, I want to see two more people make lifelong friends Mm -hmm. just because they're listeners of the show, you know? Mm -hmm. I want to see other people uh, who really, really, really like that Ray movie that comes out. Uh, that's getting bashed online <laughs> for whatever reason. To me, and then they finally. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, but to for new people to to find the Resistance broadcast for the first time because you guys are the only people who are supporting Daisy Ridley, you know, or whatever, whatever the story may be. Um, we have just we've somehow had this ability to sort of uncover a lot of fans who, in a lot of cases, have been. Um, afraid to say how they really feel about Star Wars and then somehow like find our show and be like, I'm not the only one who appreciates these aspects of the thing. There's actually this podcast and they do two episodes a week and they do all this extra stuff. And and yeah, I'm going to join that community. Yeah, I'm going to get on their discord. Yeah, I'm going to meet lifelong friends and, and, and be and feel safe in that like that area that's just these um you know, positive Star Wars fans and stuff. I, I, like, guys, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel like I'm rambling, but I, I don't have many opportunities left to say all this stuff on any official capacity. So, I think John's man. air buds just died. <laughs> <laughs> the, the best thing, the best thing would be John going. Uh, what did you say after you said "Make Solo Two Happen"? <laughs> 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 Go back. Repeat that. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to be said that can be said, but I think we'd be here for hours. But mm-hmm. yeah, um, yeah, Lacey, any final thoughts on 700 episodes and and? Uh... Um, I mean, basically just reiterating what I've already said. Like this podcast has changed my life. It's changed who I am as a person. It's made me a better person. Um, over the course of seven years, it's made made me feel um like i belong like i said earlier like i have a purpose so to speak um and i and i thank all of you for listening for giving me that opportunity for listening to us to chatting with us to supporting us in whatever way you support and i'm not just talking about patreon i'm talking about the person that listens every week no matter what the person that will thumbs up a video once in a while, the person that will retweet something, you all matter. Um, And every little action that you do matters. Um, And I thank you for that. And I look forward to what comes next. Yeah. And for people who don't know, this shirt I'm wearing is one of the snug boy. (laughs) One of the earliest shirts we made, which was that blueprint Lacey talked about before, where I came up with an idea. I'm like, what if we had his face in these words? Because he's going to use this quote again. And then James put it together. And then we put it on T Public and made like a quarter for the 10 that we sold before it got struck down by. Disney, still, but yeah, it, it, was, still, it was nice it, to get a quarter after we sold good. hundreds of shirts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, nah, but uh, man, it, it's been a hell of a ride, James. Uh, so, you know, thank you for being such a great podcast partner for so long. And uh, I know that, like I said, this doesn't mean the end of friendship, but I'm glad that we did both guest on the show because we were able to do great things together. Uh, and then when Lacey came on, it just took off and it was just like, we knew it was exactly what it needed to be. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm glad that we both guessed it on this to, to get that ball rolling and to find out, to find us now where we are here. Cause when that happened, I, I wouldn't have imagined someone saying you're going to be doing 700 plus episodes of this podcast. I'd be like, uh, what am I talking no. about? I'd be like, no, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So <laughs> Uh, in closing, uh, you know, uh, I'm not even going to do the, the Patreon thank yous or anything. I think we just need to get close this up and get us out of here. But, uh, for me, Johnny Hoey on social media and my movie pod, just like the movies. Uh, how about you, Lacey? Uh, people can find me at Lacey Gillerin on social media and at it's Lacey Gillerin on TikTok. And we will be back. <clears throat> live on Thursday for TRB Live. Me and Lacey, we will share more details on the future of TRB. 
Uh, but James, where can people find you and uh, stay in touch with you and all that good stuff? In addition to you are closing out the Bad Batch uh, yeah. reaction show. So that will still be on the channel through the end of that as well. So uh, you still get your dose of James after this episode. But go ahead, pal. Yeah, just a few few more. I think like if you're a patron, we have a poll chat coming out tomorrow. Um, and then the Bad Batch episodes uh, as the series ends. I think there's just a few more. Um, I will be on social media always, you know, at uh, Myra Trunks on Twitter and Instagram. So uh, I think I said this on the live show too, but it still stands. Like if there is something that you guys want to talk about, whether it's something, you know, Star Wars related about like the TV show or a new book or something like that, you guys want my opinions. I'm still in touch. You can still get a hold of me and ask me personally what I think of X or Y about Star Wars. So I don't want to completely close that if you feel like, um, you know, like I said this earlier, like some people feel like they've been listening to this person for so long and then they're suddenly gone. Like I don't want to be entirely gone um, in that regard. I still want to be able to uh, have those conversations with people um, so, you know, the DMS are open, if you will, uh, to that, that regard. Um, but I want to thank everybody like along the way, uh, listeners, uh, patrons, uh, websites we've worked with, uh, the, uh, ad people, people who've paid for us and, uh, to Lacey and John. Damn it, James. I got you. I got you, John. No, I got to the end, you jerk. God. <laughs> oh man. It's been it's been awesome, dude. And I just know that we're still gonna talk, so it'll be all good there. Um but that takes us to the end of the show. Thank you, James. Everyone give uh, definitely hit up James on social media. Show him the love and the appreciation and all the hard work he put in for this podcast for seven years. Don't be don't hesitate to tell him. Go tell him. Because it is a it is a lot of work. He had fun, but uh hopefully you uh show him show him the love for uh what he's put into this podcast. Absolutely. But, um and me now and I look like be- the bad guy because I'm not crying. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, <laughs> You'll be crying when you have to do a podcast with me. I don't think I, I, don't think I was gonna. Uh, I don't think it, I didn't think it was gonna happen. And then, like the last second, damn, we almost got there. And it's it. like I one of our it. longest episodes ever. Too. I understand. But, I understand. Um, yeah, me and Lacey will be back with you on Thursday night for TRB Live, where we will share more details on the future of the pod, as I said before. Uh, so we hope you have a great week. And until next time, from us here at the Resistance Broadcast, we'll see you around, James. May the force be with you.